Hey everyone, it's Leifi and I'm back with another build guide for Albion Online. As you already know, with the upcoming update into the fail, we'll have new solo content in the game in the form of the mist. Where there is new solo content, undoubtedly that will be the age old question, what build is the best? Well, I can't answer that quite yet, because aside from introducing a playground with very new rule sets, this patch also brings a bunch of new armors that we haven't played yet. We also don't know how rare these items will be. But what I do know, and what I can share with you today, are 5 builds that I will be playing myself, which I think will be very strong options in this new content. Where will I be playing these builds you ask? Well of course, live on twitch.tv slash levy. I'll be live streaming a bunch once the new update hits live, so make sure to visit my channel already and go drop a follow. Besides, you also get Twitch drops from watching my streams, which will reward you with a bunch of cool exclusive cosmetics in game. Let's go over the first build, one that I think will be a great build to play in the mists. If you've been watching my streams, you've already seen me play this build plenty and have enormous success with it. I'm of course talking about the Bow of Padden. What makes this build great is that you can play it in very different ways. You can play Kite, Poke and Pressure. My favorite way to play it is Pressure, but I would definitely consider changing to Kite if the mists are melee heavy or Poke if it's heavy on ranged. On your secondary, you always want to be on Frost Shot. It's just an irreplaceable ability that will provide a huge amount of crowd control and mobility, which is very important in these types of content. Your ultimate is very hard to hit, let me tell you that. Or rather, it's just very easy to miss. But once you hit it, not only does it make for a huge amount of AoE damage, but it also keeps interrupting your enemies. It just has enormous value. Combined with Frost Shot, you can even keep your enemies in the AoE for longer, which just makes this ability a very scary one in the eyes of any opponent. For the passive, I like to take Energetic, because I do run into energy issues in prolonged fights, but if you want to take a different passive, you most definitely can. The Helmet is the Mage Cow, on which I normally take Poison, which makes for more damage and more pressure, but when you need more crowd control in this build, you definitely want to swap to Force Field. This will grant you an AoE knockback and keep enemies even further away from you. Swap based on the situation. Your armor in this build is the Assassin Jacket which provides you the ambush ability. This ability will be immensely popular in this content as it makes for an invisibility. But do be warned that if you do any damage during ambush, you will repeal yourself. So if you have any poisons running on your targets, whether it's your primary or helmet, you will repeal yourself right after you use it. It's a mistake I made countless times and learned the hard way, so a good thing to remember if you take ambush. Now in certain situations you might be better off with Inferno Shield on your armor instead of Ambush. This ability will give you a defensive shield that reflects damage back at attackers, so you basically punish them for attacking you, which could be a very great tool to use in times where you don't need invisibility. As for boots, I like to run any of the plate boots for a rejuvenating sprint, which simply adds healing to this build on top of mobility. I do think the boots are quite flexible, so if you want to take something else, feel free to do so. But the extra healing really saved me a lot when playing this build so far, and I'm sure it will come in very clutch in the mists as well. For the cape, I like to take Undead, which adds more utility and survivability, but if you notice you have severe energy issues, you may want to consider a Limhurst cape. For food, I highly recommend Pork Omelette to increase your overall utility with this build by lowering your cooldowns. Take Enchanted Food if you can afford it for even lower cooldowns. I like to take healing pots with this build, but you can always take other pots as well. It's good to know you can also play this build with Warbo instead of both Baden. So if you want to kite and poke more and be less all in, this is a great weapon swap and a completely viable build for the mists as well. Besides, it makes this build far more affordable. The second build I think will be great for the mists is one I covered many times on my channel before as it excels in various solo contents. And once more it's an excellent build for this type of content as well. It does require more practice and patience than other builds, but it has huge potential once you master it. It's also one of the cheaper builds which is a huge benefit for any player. This build has the one handed spear as its weapon on which you want to take the first primary, fifth secondary and the life leech passive. Now this weapon is extremely versatile because you can use a wide variety of secondary abilities so if you are better off with one of the others, just swap anytime you want to. Impaler, the fifth one, is the recommended go-to as it makes for a range slow on a low cooldown with a good chunk of damage to it. 
And since this weapon is one-handed, you can take an offhand in which you want to wield a torch. This weapon has very hard hitting auto attacks because of the passive, so faster auto attacks in combination with lower cooldowns is exactly the type of offhand you cannot miss out on with a weapon like this. Since this build is utility based, you want to use the Fiend Cal, which has the Purge ability. This is a ranged ability that will remove all buffs on your selected target. You can use this to render others weaker or immobile, making it a very strong ability to have in your kit. And since the Fiend Cal is clot, just like Mage Cal, you can always swap the Force Field if you need more crowd control in the form of a knockback. For the armor, the Assassin Jacket, which you want to use Ambush on for utility. Especially when playing a weapon with a lot of utility, such as the Spear, the invisibility has a lot of value. With that said prior, you can always change the Inferno Shield if you need more of a defensive slash offensive approach to your battles. I highly recommend Plate Boots with this build as well, as a rejuvenating sprint is just that useful. If you pick Soldier Boots, you can also swap the Wanderlust for the times you need a bigger sprint instead of healing. Undead Cape is very useful in this build as well, as you have plenty of utility and mobility to grant yourself a second chance in case you would normally die. This build is not an all-in type of thing, but more of a calculated approach in which you play poke and interrupt and basically hit and run consistently. So adding survivability in the slots you can is an excellent choice. For food, I would recommend Roast Pork as it makes for great sustain combined with the passive on your weapon. Alternatively, Eel Stew would be great as well. Potion wise, healing, resistance and invisibility all work, although I once again favor healing with this build as well. The third build I'm very sure you will be seeing a lot in the mists, as it is one of the most popular solo builds in general. The bear powers have massive mobility, great damage and even true damage on top of some other perks. On this weapon you want the third primary because it makes for the most DPS from the three options you have whilst also providing some crowd control and mobility. You want the second secondary, Adrenaline Boost, as this buff increases your damage, move speed and even attack speed. Huge buff on a rather low cooldown. Razor Cut, your ultimate once again makes for mobility, but also instant damage with a true damage bleed. This ability also has an extra perk, in which hitting at least one enemy player will reduce its cooldown by 40%. So this weapon truly has a lot going on for it, which makes it an excellent pick for this content. You want the Fiend Cowl for the Purge mostly because of the chase potential it provides you and you also want the Assassin Jacket for either Ambush or Inferno Shield. But if you do play Ambush, be careful of your bleeds so you don't proc yourself out of invisibility on accident. For boots, I highly recommend Royal Sandals. Extra damage and an unpurgeable sprint goes very well with a high pressure, high mobility weapon such as the Bear Paws. I would recommend the Undead Cape if you want a tiny bit of survivability in this build, but if you want to emphasize the pressure this weapon makes for, you could go with the Bridge Watch Cape instead to debuff your enemies and keep them locked. Tatford is also an option if you simply want more DPS. For food, I would highly recommend Eel Stew as it makes for both damage and cooldown, which are two stats this build highly benefits from. For pots, I would go with healing unless you want to play super high pressure, in which poison would be a great option. Let's go over build number 4 which features the Battle Braces. Now the sole reason this build is featured in this video is because it has an enormous amount of mobility. And mobility is simply king for these types of content. It doesn't have a lot of damage or a lot of tools, but the mobility makes up for the lack of everything. In the mists it's 1v1v1, so you don't have to do everything yourself. Instead you can just wait on the sidelines and strike at the right moment. And this build is perfect for that. You want to take Dragon Leap and Triple Kick along with the fourth passive, Hard to Catch. That's basically going to be your slogan whenever playing this build. The other passives work as well, but this one might get you out of sticky situations. For the helmet you want Bean Cow to give yourself chase potential, and Armor once again Assassin Jacket on which you want to hold there to ambush. The utility this invisibility makes for goes great with everything else in this build. Boots you can either go for one of the plate boots for some extra healing, but royal sandals are a great option as well as it makes for a sprint that cannot be purged. I favor royal sandals, but you have to use it more defensively, so don't be too trigger happy with boots on this one if you take royal sandals. For the cape you definitely want on that cape as this build is all about playing it safe and for the same reason eels do for some extra cooldown. Now if you want to play war close in the mists but actually want to fight others, you can swap out your gauntlets for the fists of Avalon. This will take away from the mobility but will open up a whole lot of fight potential. 
The ultimate is extremely strong on this one as it provides a purge, which means you can swap your helmet if you make this change and can also consider Inferno Shield on your armor if you want to emphasize your fight potential. It feels criminal not to include this build in this list as I'm very sure we'll be seeing a ton of one-shot blood ladders at the start of the mists. I'm not sure if they will be as popular once the meta settles, but I do believe that in the initial phase they will be very popular. And with a good reason because this build is very strong. It is a one-trick pony build, but if you can delete about anyone out there in just one rotation, who cares what it is? On the blood ladder you want deadly swipe, chain slash and the first passive, deep cuts. You want the Musak offhand to increase your overall damage. Mage Cowl is the go-to helmet for this build as it makes for a lot of single target damage which is very important for the one shot. But you could consider going with Fiend Cowl if you feel like you're experienced enough and want more utility. The Purge will get rid of enemy defenses and mobility which can help secure your kills even better. The Cleric Rope gives you a damage buff and blocks all incoming damage for a short duration, so with an all-in build like this one, that's pretty crucial. I also recommend going with Royal Sandals, as the sprint is unpurgeable, which makes for better escape and chasing odds. Besides, it also makes for more damage, so if you want to use it offensively, you will get the job done better. Definitely Tatford Cape on this one for more damage as well as Beast 2, and preferably an enchanted one at that. Finally, poison for your pots to increase your damage even more. I guess you get the message by now. Everything is about more damage with this build. And that concludes 5 excellent solo builds for the upcoming new content The Mists. You can find me live on Twitch, link down below. But before you go, don't forget to smash that like button so this video gets blessed by the little elves that control the algorithm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.